Welcome back everybody to another Muddy Mint video. Today we're going to do something really fun because we are going to make a soap. We're gonna make coconut and rose soap, but it's a pretty simple soap. So we're gonna talk a little bit about scaling your business. We went from basically, you know, a few bars of soap every month to 50,000 bars of soap a year in our last year. So we are, I would say, probably a mid-size soap business. So we're not huge like the soap gal. If you are interested in really big production, definitely check her out. But we have some experience with scaling up and it's one of the things that I had the hardest time finding information about on YouTube. So today we're gonna start talking about that a little bit in this video and then later on we're gonna be doing a whole series on scaling up. So coconut rose is gonna be made today. So we're gonna show you exactly how we do that and we're gonna have a little chat. So we'll see you in a second. All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be making coconut and rose soap. So coconut and rose soap was our, I, th I would say it's like our second best-selling bar after Mountain Man. Coconut and rose is definitely a popular bar. A lot of people make a bar that's similar, basically a pink soap with rose petals on top. It's a really appealing design and also really easy to make. Our coconut and rose soap does not smell like coconut. We do not use fragrance oils, and so we don't really have a way of making a really good coconut scent. I've heard that there are some things that you can do to make a coconut scent, like using coconut CO2, but we don't do that. So what we are doing is an essential oil-based soap. Here is our blend. We're going to be using geranium and bergamot for this particular soap. So it's kind of a citrus rose, but it's pretty strong on the rose scent. Now, as I take you through this bar of soap, I also want to talk a little bit about scaling. And by that, I mean, you know, just making things a little bit easier for you and your business so that things go more smoothly and you can make more soap in less time. Because soap making is really all about economies of scale. You can make this much soap, which is basically 10 pounds of soap, in the same amount of time probably as you can make a lot more, 50 pounds of soap or more. And the reason is that if you are able to avoid having to measure out each ingredient and make your lye water all at the beginning all at once, then that's gonna save you a ton of time. So some of the things that we did to make our soap making a little bit easier in the early days, because it can get way more complicated than this, is we started to buy drums of olive oil and coconut oil. So those are the first two types of oils that we bought drums for. And the reason is pretty simple. We use a ton of olive oil. So being able to crank it out of a drum really quickly was super key for us at the beginning. The other one is coconut oil, which is also an oil that we use very frequently in our soaps. And coconut oil is solid at, you know, 76 degrees basically, it becomes liquid. But if it's cooler than that, it's solid. And so having a drum of coconut oil with a heat band around it in order to liquefy and then just be able to pump it out made a huge difference for us as well. So this particular batch that I'm making right now is actually from a custom drum. What this means is that our oils are actually already pre-mixed by somebody else. So we order these from Soper's Choice and you do have to order four drums at a time, which isn't ideal for a lot of people, especially if you're at home. And now that we are back in our home studio rather than our big production space downtown, we are going back to not using drums, but it's just a good thing to know that you can do that. Now, there are some challenges with that, and we'll talk about that in another video, but essentially, you can only use one recipe if you're gonna be doing that. We are able to use multiple recipes with custom drums, but that's something that's a little bit more advanced, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But anyway, I just got this out of a drum. I did not weigh out my olive oil, my coconut oil, all my different oils. And so that's one huge way that you can help make your soap making process a lot easier. Another way that people do this on a smaller scale is just to master batch your oils. And we used to do that um, a long time ago as well. Basically, you make buckets like this all in one day. Maybe you make 10 of them, get them all ready, and when it comes time to make your soap, you just grab a bucket, throw it in the microwave, or warm it up in some other way, and then your oils are all ready to go. Another thing that you can master batch is your lye water. 
Now here's our lye water all measured out. This is how much I'm going to use for the soap that we're going to make today. But this is what we keep our lye water in. So basically this is a 50-50 lye water solution. So it's half lye, half water. And we have a whole video on this that we will link at the end probably of this video so that you can check that out. But using 50-50 lye water is a game changer. And it is awesome for new soap makers too. I talk about this in my book that just came out today actually, The Natural Soap Making Handbook. And it's basically an introduction to 50-50 lye because very few brand new soap makers use a 50-50 lye water solution. So this is a great thing to do for anybody, I think, but especially if you're scaling up, having your lye water ready to go is really, really a great way to get started with your soap making day without having to, you know, pre-mix your lye water and then having to wait for it to cool down. The other thing that we use often is this coconut milk. This is Aeroy D coconut milk. We actually just get this on Amazon. You can probably get it in a lot of other places. But what's nice about this is that I know that this is exactly how much I need for my for this particular bucket. So we use approximately 34 ounces of liquid in this particular recipe, additional liquid. So we've got our, our water in our lye water and then we have this on top of that. And so just having it in this container and I don't have to weigh it out, that makes a huge difference. And let's get started actually. Let me put this coconut milk in here and what I'll do is I'll weigh it out as we do that because I know that it's approximately the right amount but it's not exact and one thing that's important to know about soap making is your water to lye ratio and it doesn't have to be you know exact in other words you need to have the same amount of water as you have lye minimum in order to mix up your lye water solution but then any water that you add to your recipe after that is is extra water basically and it's just going to help make your batter more fluid anyway there's a lot more information on that on some of our other videos but for now i'm going to pour in this coconut milk and by the way we never measure this because we know that it's approximately right I said 34 earlier, but I meant 17. This is the other size, which you can use for half a batch. So right now I'm making 10 pounds. If you are making five pounds, you could use this one. So this larger container yielded 17.85 ounces. My recipe here calls for 17 ounces. So this is a little bit more. That means we're gonna have a little bit of a higher liquid to lye ratio, but it's pretty close and I kind of feel like more coconut milk is probably a good thing, so. All right, we got our coconut milk. Oh, we also have to measure out our French pink clay. So I'm gonna do that. So as I said in the intro, last year we made 50,000 bars of soap which may seem like a lot to some of you and may not seem like a lot to others of you that are watching, but we were able to do that with just two people making soap. We did have somebody cutting all of our soap. We had people shipping all of our soap, all of our orders. And so Troy and I were the two making the soap and it took us about four hours a day to make 400 bars of soap. So four hours for 400 bars, which means an hour per 100 bars, and that's two of us. So if it had just been one of us, it would probably have taken twice that amount of time. Now that includes, you know, lining the molds, getting everything prepped, getting all of our oils prepped. It also includes chit chat and other things that we did. So there's, there's a lot involved in soap making, and a lot of people say it's 90% prep and 10% actually making, which is really accurate, so. All right, I've got my French pink clay in there. I'm gonna add my essential oil blend. Now we add our essential oil blend directly to our oils. We are using geranium in this particular blend, which can accelerate. So if that makes you nervous, you could add the geranium at trace. I find that the geranium in this particular soap 
is, you know, it's just fine. It does accelerate a little bit, but since we only have one color design, it's not that big a deal. So I just like to put it in right now. Okay. Another thing we're going to talk about in a future video is how to order drums and what you need in order to do that. That was one of the sort of, I wouldn't say it was the scariest thing, but it was one of the things I was very apprehensive about doing to order a drum and then a, having to figure out how to move it into the studio. And then what do you need to open the drum? You need a pump, you need a wrench, you need a bunch of things. And there just wasn't a ton of information online about that. So we are going to do a video on that in the future. If you're interested in any other scaling up videos, please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Let's get the soap going. One of the things that makes a huge difference in your business too is hiring people. It's really daunting at first, but even if you just have one person helping you, I find that either the bottleneck is with shipping, which is how it was for me when I hired my first employee, or it's with production. And so having either somebody that's assisting you with soap making, like for example, let's say they get all this ready for you, like everything I've done right now, and then all you have to do is take this bucket and turn it into soap, then that makes a huge difference in how much soap you can make. And if your bottleneck is shipping, like for example, my issue was that I had all these orders to ship and then by the time I was done, I did not feel like making soap. So I hired somebody to come in here and this is just at my home and she worked on all the shipping while I made soap. And that was really, really, I mean, that year we grew five times in our business revenue wise. So that just goes to show how much an extra set of hands can really help you. All right, so I showed you this container, this lye container earlier, which is how we started when we first started master batching our lye. And I've been doing this for, I don't know, at least five or six years, maybe even longer, just because for me, the biggest hurdle to making soap was making lye. If I had to come in here and make lye first thing, I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing that. And so having the lye made in advance actually made me make way more soap. So sometimes some of the things that you're trying to figure out are kind of psychological. I mean, if you can figure out what it is that's holding you back from doing what you need to do in your business, whether it's production related or shipping related. I mean, I was happy to ship all day long. I would come in here and ship and I was super excited about it, seeing all the orders, but making soap, the lie would basically stop me almost instantly. So figure out what your bottleneck is and then work on a solution for that. But what I was going to say is that this became too little live for us. And so what we ended up doing is getting a lie tank, which is another one of our videos that you can watch. Now that we're back in our smaller space, we're going to go back to these containers, but a lie tank is fantastic if you're, you know, getting pretty big. All right, here we go. We're going to add our lye and then that's all we have to do for the soap. Then we just pour it into the molds and we're going to texture the top and add some botanicals on top. I will say too that having the right size containers, the right size stick blender, all that stuff, and just being organized. Honestly, if you're organized, you know where everything is, you have a plan for what you're gonna make, and you kind of have a process for how you make things, that's gonna go a long, long way to making you feel more efficient and productive. Because remember that the price of a bar of soap is mostly your labor. I mean, the ingredients do add up, but most of what 
makes up the price of the bar of soap is gonna be your labor. So the less time you can spend making soap and the more efficient you can be, the better. Okay, I did not stick blend that very long because I know that my oils are pretty warm and my lye was also pretty warm and I have geranium in here so it's actually already looking good even though I barely stick blended it. Okay, one thing I really like to do is stir my batter. I feel like I don't see people doing this very much in video you know, they stick blend and then immediately pour, or maybe they're just doing this part off camera. But I find that stirring your batter makes a huge difference to making it just way more fluid and easy to pour. Okay. All right, I got my molds behind me. I'm just gonna grab them. Okay, here we go. Now this batter's already a little bit thick, but in a good way. I actually really love this batter because I love making super tall peaks on top of soap. Well, not super tall. Some people make taller peaks than I do, but I like a good texture on top, so. I kind of like when a soap is sort of thick and sets up. One of the first steps that I took in soap making for scaling up is to go from one of these nurture soap molds, which is five pounds, to two. And that's where these buckets come in. I mean, they're pretty full. Once you add the lye and everything, as you probably noticed, but they're kind of the perfect size for two loaves like this. And then when you want to go to four loaves rather than two, you simply double, you know, you just have two of these buckets. Or you can get a bucket that's twice as big and then just make a double batch. But I've always found that like bigger equipment and having to buy new things, I always try to avoid that. And so Instead of going to a bucket that's twice as big as this one, I kind of rather tamp those out a bit. Um, I would rather actually make two of those buckets. And one thing that works out really well actually is if you have a two color soap and you're making a slab of soap, so four of these molds, it's actually really nice to use one bucket for the bottom color and then another bucket for the top color. So you're actually mixing each one separately. You have the lye, you know, a separate amount of lye for each bucket, just like we did today for one bucket. And then I would pour that soap in half the slab mold and then I pour the other color on top. So a lot of our designs are actually two color designs and that's the reason because using two buckets for two colors is actually fantastic because you can put the color right in there. You don't have to worry about pouring out some of the batter and mixing in the color. It's just a really easy way to make a larger batch of soap. Hopefully that made sense. All right, I better put my goggles back on. All right, we're gonna texture this. Yeah, this one gets thick really fast. Texturing soap is one of my favorite things. There was just a soap maker on Instagram who was talking about how she hates it, which I thought was really interesting. And we're all different and we all have different kind of roadblocks. I actually love texturing soap, but in a way I kind of prefer bars that are flat on top when I'm actually using them in the shower, even though I'm much more drawn to the ones with texture online or in pictures. So it's kind of funny. Soap with a texture definitely photographs a lot better. So 
If you're kind of wondering whether to texture or not to texture, it's really personal preference, but since everything is all about pictures and video and social media these days, it's kind of worth taking some of that into account when you're designing your soap. Having a textured top is really nice because you, the, when you take a photo, the light has a lot of different places to hit and it's just gonna be a lot more interesting. Okay, we're gonna add our roses, rose petals on top. This is another thing that I love to do is add some botanicals on top, but I only add a little bit because I don't want it all over the bar kind of going down the drain. But at the same time, again, in photos and on social media, this is gonna catch someone's eye a lot more than a flat bar. Some people do flat bars really, really well, so I'm definitely not saying you shouldn't do a flat bar, but. And again, I actually prefer a flat bar when I'm using soap, so it's just kind of funny, but people don't always buy, you know, what they like. And by that, I mean, they might say they like something, but then you see them buying something completely different. I actually have a funny story from when I used to own a soap shop with a friend of mine who did ceramics. I'm just looking for something to poke these petals down with. I had a woman come in once and she told me that she only uses soap with essential oils and all natural soaps and I was like, that's great. You know, we make a ton of those types of soaps. And at the time I also made soaps with fragrance oils. This was about, you know, 2018 when I was maybe 2016, actually, when I was first starting to make soap. And so she walked in and I was showing her where all the essential oil bars are. And she also preferred unscented bars. And so we were looking at those and then when she walked out of the store, she walked out with some of the most strongly scented fragrance oil soaps. And so even though she came in talking about what she wanted, she actually left with something completely different. And I don't even know what my point is in telling you this story, other than the fact that it's kind of interesting how marketing works and you kind of have to try a lot of different things before you can figure out what it is that you enjoy making, but also what it is that people are buying. Because if you have a business, then that's super important. I mean, you don't want to be making only the things that you love, and then it turns out that people don't end up buying it. However, I will say that once I switched to essential oils, which is what I loved, and I felt really passionately about it, and also I couldn't actually physically be in the room where all my fragrance oil soaps were curing, so that was one of the biggest reasons that we ended up switching to all natural and essential oils only. If you are passionate about something, then that definitely comes through in your branding and in the way you talk about things. So that's super important too. So I'm not saying to not do what you actually love doing. Just, it's good to watch how your sales are going and what people find interesting, and then use that as clues to decide what to do next. All right. I think we are done with our soap and that's it. I'm going to make another two loaves of these off camera and we're going to be offering these up for sale at the end of June, I believe, early July. We have our sea salt bars. We're going to have these. We're also going to make mountain man, wild lavender, orange and bergamot, and sea salt and kelp. And we're going to do videos for all of those. And we're also releasing our recipes for these too, by the way. These are our main line soaps and... We have not released any recipes for any of our mainline soaps. And so this is kind of exciting. We're gonna have coconut and rose up first. And then, well, actually we're probably gonna do calming lavender and rosemary mint juniper because we already have videos for those soaps. And then we're gonna release this one and then all the others are gonna follow. So anyway, check us out. Check out our other videos on YouTube. We'll put a couple up here somewhere so that you can click on them. Also check out our live video and look out for our scaling series, which is gonna come out hopefully in a few months from now. All right, thanks so much for watching, bye.